Welcome one and all to our service on this Sunday after Christmas. This is uh, re recognized as um, Boxing Day in the world around us. Um, and the day our service is put together as a mission and service Sunday worship service with the United Church of Canada. But we also recognize this day as what is called the Feast of Stephen. We'll hear just a little bit more about that uh, in a few minutes. But let us uh, begin our uh, worship today with this uh, responsive call to worship. We gather to once again receive the announcement of Jesus' birth. The Father, Father, Jesus, has Mary did when she died her child. To glorify God as the shepherds did when they saw love lying in a manger. To remember that Jesus' love was an out of the box kind of love. On that first Christmas, the prophets knew Jesus would grow to love without limits. Instructing followers to love their neighbors. When Jesus said, Love your neighbor, he meant everyone. His love was profound, that even from the very first day the angels couldn't keep from singing. We've been singing along with the chorus of angels ever since. Glory, hallelujah, Christ is born. So let us join in singing our first hymn, number 36 in our hymn book, Angels in the, from the Realms of Glory. Jesus means for us has just begun. Over 2,000 years ago, hope, peace, joy, and love came to light in the birth of the Christ child. By the fire of Jesus' spirit, hearts like ours have been warmed ever since. And still today, we pray that love burns strong within us, such that friends and strangers find comfort and warmth by its glow. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
This service is going to be a series of uh, song, some scripture, and uh, reflections upon uh, the season that we're in. This day after Christmas is set aside as a memorial of Stephen, the first Christian martyr. Once again, the church seems to take a counterintuitive approach, reminding us of sin and suffering hard on the heels of the joyful celebration of the Nativity. I wanted us to join together in singing Good King Wenceslas, this song, the, the story of uh, this, um, yeah, of Good King Wenceslas. But uh, I wanted us to hear the introduction to it before we sing it. So this story is about two men, a Bohemian Duke and an Anglican minister who lived nearly a thousand years apart. Wenceslas was born in Bohemia, in modern, in modern Czechoslovakia, in the early 1900s, in the early 900s, at the right time. His father, the Czech ruler, Duke Radislav, gave him a good education supervised by his godly go grandmother. When his father died, Wenceslas, seeing his mother mishandled affairs of state, she, he stepped in at age 18, seizing the reins of government. And from the beginning, he proved a different sort of king. He sought good relations with surrounding nations, particularly with Germany. He took steps to reform the judicial system, reducing the number of death sentences and the arbitrary power of judges. He encouraged the building of churches and showed heartfelt concern for the poor. He reportedly cut firewood for orphans and widows, often carrying the provisions of his own, on his own shoulders through the snow. Wenceslas' brief reign ended suddenly. His pagan and rebellious brother, Boleslav, murdered him on September 28, 929, as he left for church. His people venerated him as a martyr, and today Wenceslas is patron saint of Czechoslovakia. He would be hardly remembered, however, but for John Mason Neal, an Anglican minister, with a passion for returning church architecture and music to their ancient grandeur. Neal helped establish a committee to investigate and restore dilapidated church buildings in Great Britain. He was particularly upset at the ugly stoves installed in the heat, to heat churches in Victorian times. Disliking the hymns of Isaac Watts, he also sought to return church music to its medieval roots. Neil worked hard to translate ancient Greek, Latin, and Syrian hymns into English. In so doing, he gave us Christmas carols. Good Christian men rejoice, O come all ye faithful. And he also translated the psalm Sunday hymn, O glory, laud, and honor. Good King Wenceslas is not a translation, but an original poem written by Neil to honor a godly monarch's concern for the poor. Neil himself worked with the needy, serving as warden of a charitable residence for indigent old men. Neil acquainted, John Neil acquainted opinions, antiquated opinions, widely scorned in his own day, but were still singing his songs. Let us join together in singing Good King Wenceslas. <clears throat> Yeah. 
Readings from Proverbs 3, 21 to 28. The book of Proverbs includes wise sayings about what matters most in life. Think of it as the elder in your family whispering a culmination of the most important things they have learned in their life to you. In this short excerpt from the third chapter, verses 21 to 28, the writer speaks of wisdom and prudence and doing good when we have the power to do it. Listen to the Spirit speak to you through these wise words. My son, preserve sound judgment and discernment. Do not let them out of your sight. They will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being snared. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it. When it is in your power to act, do not say to your neighbor, come back later, I'll give it to you tomorrow, when you now have it with you 